The first Steam Next Fest of 2024 is here. I have looked through, played a lot of demos and found a few gems that are worth your time. So let's get to it. The Land Beneath Us. This is a turn-based game, but not in the traditional sense. When you move, the enemy moves as well. By walking into the enemy, you attack it. If you have a gun or a ranged weapon that fire, let's say, two tiles away, you shoot instead of walking towards the enemy. The enemy attacks are clearly visible by the orange lined squares. And you can have four weapons equipped, one for each direction. Really neat idea. This means you have to think a bit when you're attacking which weapon you want to use and which side you want to approach from. Then you can also have five relics, basically stat boosts. Otherwise, it follows the standard rogue formula with rooms of enemies, rewards in between, and permanent upgrades when you die. The pixel graphics are nice as well with some vibrant colors and also red doom on a few levels. Unfortunately no release date for this one yet. On Steam it's put as coming soon. Then we have Be My Horde. In it you play as the necromancer Moriana. This is all about building an undead army to defeat the enemies you're facing. You start off with a few minions and as your minions kill enemies you can resurrect them and add them to your army. As the game progresses, you face waves of harder and harder enemies and different combination of enemies. I really like the premise, but the demo is a bit bare bones. You can basically only walk and resurrect. I would love for some more mechanics in the game, like spells to shoot or upgrades to get. It looks like there will be permanent upgrades between runs. But when you're actually playing, I think the game is missing like one or two elements. I do find the armor building fun, and I do really see potential in the game. This is dropping into early access 29th of February, so it might be more fleshed out there in the early access version, and I'm keen to try it out then. Next up is Standalone. Damn, the story is kind of brutal in this game. You are an AI that has been fused with a sheep. There seems to be a conflict between wolves and sheep in this game, or at least one wolf is doing experiments on sheep. I don't really know what's going on in the game, but man, the wolves are really slaughtering the sheep. And as the title alludes, you stand alone as you try to regain your memories. The combat is really fast and fluid, caught me a bit by surprise at how fast the enemies was attacking me and moving. Same goes for the boss, like it took me almost a whole boss fight in order to get his movements. But yeah, after I played it a while, I get used to it. The stages are a bit short in my opinion. There is a lot of interruption in the gameplay, with you jumping between the stages. I hope the levels are a bit longer in the final product. You can equip 4 skills that can be modified and enhanced. I don't know if there are other weapons, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. The music was really good as well in the game. It really had me feeling the groove as you play the game. Standalone will drop sometime this year. Next up is Wraithbender. This one will enter early access Q1 this year. And I see a lot of potential in this game. It's a bit rough around the edges as of now. This is a roguelite game with very interesting art style. Yes, it looks like pixels, but much more blocky or hazy. I don't really know how to describe it. The combat is fast, with kind of a metroidvania-esque progression system. You have to find items or keys to unlock the next area, or weapons and permanent upgrades when you die. The problem I have with the game is that it's a bit hard to see what's going on at times, especially the enemy's attacks and movement. And I think it's a combination between the art style and the enemy's animations. There are plans to add co-op into the game. That could be really fun. But yeah, I hope to get back to this game in the future, closer to release, to see how it has progressed. Planet Tiles is a really cool little puzzle game slash city builder slash strategy game. I had a hard time with the game in the beginning, and I think the game needs to explain everything a bit better. When I got the hang of the game though, it became really fun and very strategic. In the game, you're essentially placing blocks of different sizes and shapes with different biomes on top, like forests, mountains, desert, on a planet to build the planet. You start with a certain amount of blocks, and to get more, you have to score 100 points. The best way to do that is to complete the missions on the right side, and then you can also evolve the tiles and get more points if you place them in chunks of nine. There's a bunch more factors, different sizes of planets, and yeah, it was really fun to play. A lot harder than expected, but once you get a hang of it, it's, it's fun. I can see myself getting very addicted to this one. Then I came across a rally game, Drive Rally. It's been a while since I played a rally game, so this was kind of nice. The cars in the game drive really well and feels perfect to drive. I'm just a shitty driver. I like the minimal graphics. It's well for this type of game, especially when it's an indie game. And it makes the game stand out as well. The co-driver you have in the demo is spot on, calling most things as you drive. But from time to time, he misses a turn completely. 
or he's talking about something completely different and you again don't hear the call out for the turn. That is super annoying, especially when the time requirements are super hard in this game. But the game is dropping into early access this year, so hopefully that's something they're working on to fix. And they've said they want to spend at least a year in early access before they launch the game. But yeah, if you like rally games, it's worth keeping an eye on this one. Summer House. I mean, this must be the most chill game ever. I guess not every game has to revolve around killing or winning. In this game, you're just building houses. And I can't stop looking at this game. It's just drop dead gorgeous. It looks amazing. I played around with it a bit and it seems to be no restriction on how and what you build. Like you can build whatever you want with the pieces you have in the game, of course. You can build in the air or on top of things or inside of things. It's a really chill do whatever you want kind of a game. And yeah, I just wanted to add this to the list because I can't stop looking at it. It looks so good. That was a few games I found worth mentioning. If you have other games worth checking out, please leave a comment. See you in the next one. Bye.